Well, this position makes no sense. So, recently I've become a little more involved in a conversation around a concept known as agnosticism. It's also known as theological non-cognitivism, and as much as that's a mouthful to try to get out, it basically boils down to the idea that the question of God is completely meaningless because the term God really has no coherent or unambiguous definition. The position generally assumes things like all theological positions, including agnosticism, assume far too much about the concept of God and many other theological concepts. The term actually originated in the 1960s because a rabbi named Shurin Wine had actually started leading his congregation in a direction that did not recognize any type of god. He had recently left the temple Beth El in Windsor, and when he was leading his congregation, he ended up getting confronted by the press. The Detroit Free Press ran an article in December of 1964 that had the headline, Suburban Rabbi, I Am an Atheist. This was followed by stories in Time Magazine saying much the same. Obviously, this stirred up its own bit of controversy, considering that the idea of atheism is already a bit of a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people who were entrenched in Christian and Jewish culture. Schoenwein later had to refine his views to the public and let them know that, while not precisely atheistic, did in fact not include a god. His reasoning for this stemmed from the fact that all logical positive positions on god, and all logical negative ideas about god, and everything in between were all nonsensical because the idea of god had been so poorly defined and malformed over the years. He basically came to the conclusion that it was not possible to prove or disprove God, and therefore the concept was completely meaningless. He then coined his stance as agnosticism. This is a very pragmatic view on theology, and I can respect it for that. However, I do have some issues of contention. So first, let's get out of the way that agnosticism, in its most basic form, essentially says that the idea of God is meaningless and therefore incoherent. As the idea is incoherent, there is no functional way to assign a truth value to the proposition. Functionally, this is only one step away from the agnostic position, which has evaluated the theistic positions and still assigns no truth value. I do accept the agnostic position as valid, as it is the position I hold within philosophy, whereas colloquially I'm still known as an atheist and I accept that. Common parlance has shown that the term atheist, meaning a lack of belief, is as valid as anything else as long as we're not talking about hard philosophical definitions. Anyways, that bit of housekeeping out of the way, let's move back to agnosticism. Obviously, based on everything I've shown so far, the only issue that I really have with it is that the idea of God is completely meaningless. If the only reason that an agnostic can't assign a truth value to the idea of God is because they think that the idea of God in and of itself is entirely incoherent, then I I'd like to run a thought experiment by you. Let's say you're an atheist, and you've taken the atheistic position because you see all gods as logically contradictory in some way, shape, or form. If you take this stance, it's usually because you've taken some time to look at the idea of God and dismissed it as a proposition. Ignoring any of the possible reasons someone would have for building this position, let's go ahead and just hold that in its own little bottle for a second. Now, let's say that you're a Christian. You view the idea of God as sensical only in the sense that there is an omnipotent God that you can ascribe to. This is, of course, ignoring some more nuanced positions like henotheism. Whereas the atheist assigned a truth value of negative to all gods, the Christian assigns a truth value of negative to all gods except one. The reason both of these groups of people were able to come to their conclusions was because the idea of God was coherent enough for them to assign a truth value to it, be it positive or negative. Now, a theological non-cog would look at all ideas of God and say that they are incoherent and therefore assign no truth value. But if all of these ideas of God were incoherent, coherent, then how did the Christian and the atheist come to their position? The idea must have been coherent enough for them to come to that conclusion. If someone asked me to define God, and I were to take the approach of calling it a divine anthropomorphic immortal, or if I were to take Spinoza's approach in saying that God is the universe, both of those ideas are understandable enough to where you can assign whether or not you believe my statement about either of those ideas of God. You'll come to a position on either of these ideas about God because you'll be able to evaluate the position and make a decision from there. If these ideas were incoherent, then the, your ability to evaluate them would be completely nonsensical and you wouldn't be able to do it in the first place. Now, there are some igtheists who take the approach that all ideas about God are logically contradictory in one way, shape, or form, and that's why they hold the position. If we use the Christian God for an example, this is one of the reasons I hold contention with that idea of God. I don't think that the quad or tri-omni states can be held together in the way that most Christians ascribe to him. But 
But therein lies the rub. The only way that I was able to come to that position was by evaluating the proposition of the Christian God and assigning a negative value to it. This is where we would have to make the distinction that the idea of God being incoherent is very different than a coherent idea of God is a logical contradiction. And there's my personal biggest problem with ichthyism. I think there's a fundamental difference between something being a contradiction and something being coherent. You can have a coherent idea that is completely contradictory, and the only way that you're able to evaluate that something is a contradiction is by evaluating it. Now granted, there are some philosophers that disagree that the idea of ichthyism and theological non-cognivism are essentially the same. That's fine. That's a conversation that can be had at a later date if anybody wants to hold contention with my personal view that they're essentially the same concept. Now, there is one more issue I have with ichthyism, and it's not ascribed immediately when talking about the term. This is that ichthyism basically smuggles in empiricism. Empiricism is the idea that all of knowledge is derived from our sense experiences. It was developed in the 17th and 18th century, and one of the reasons that it's so closely linked with ichthyism is that one of the reasons that some ichthyists hold their position is that the idea of a supernatural deity inhabiting a realm outside of our own is completely nonsensical. I don't necessarily hold to this because if you were able to develop a sentient AI within a video game, that sentient AI may have no ability to discern if there's any other reality besides the virtual one that it was created in. If this was ever demonstrated to be the case and we could develop an AI that ran into this issue, then the entire idea of empiricism would fall on its own. Some of the other issues with empiricism are that it relies entirely on the sensory data that is interpreted by your own body. As any psychologist will tell you, the sensory data that your body works with to give you thoughts, to give you sight, to give you smell, is all entirely subjective and changes from person to person. If you've ever heard the term, is your green my green, or is your red my red, then you understand this concept perfectly. Our senses basically act as a filter to the outside world in order to give us some data that our brains can interpret to make sense of our surroundings. But our senses are just that, they're a filter. By the time your brain gets to the point of interpreting that data, it's entirely become subjective and nowhere near as reliable as we would like it to be. This is one of the reasons why most atheists will hold that personal experience is not a valid reason to believe in any deities. Ichthyism has to smuggle in empiricism in order to even appear valid, but even then, the ability to talk about the concept of God demonstrates that it is at least coherent enough to be spoken about. It's not the same type of incoherent thought as saying, that is an orange sound. That's a statement that we can assign no values to because the entire idea of that statement makes no sense to any of us. Especially if we assume empiricism like ichthyism has to. But with that said guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I haven't been able to do an LHAC video in a while, and I figured that this issue was topical enough that I wanted to go ahead and tackle it myself. If you enjoyed the video, please go ahead and give it a like, and subscribe if you haven't already. My channel's almost at 5,000 subscribers, and I couldn't be more excited for that. With that said everyone, as always, insert end of video tagline here.